Hey guys, um, I have a question on this uh, self-defense issue. Like I said, it's, we're not really talking about violence per se, but self-defense. And I'm actually going to read to you a little bit of an email I got because I've gotten a lot of responses along this line. And there's something that bothers me about it because it reminds me of Zionist Judaism. So, I'm going to read this one section of an email from uh, someone sent to me. It says, I have a few things to offer. I felt this would be the better way instead of commenting on the thread. You mentioned a few things that I will touch on here. First, yes, I believe that it is perfectly fine to call the authorities on anyone that is committing a crime. Not to do my dirty work, as you put it. That is your opinion. If there is a violent person hurting someone, then the authorities that have been put in place to take care of this sort of thing are the ones to take care of it. It's not necessarily my thinking, hey, I won't touch this, but I'll call someone who will do my evil for me. I see it as letting the world take care of its own. Um, and he says, he goes on to present some scenarios, uh, what I would do, you know, theoreticals. Um, he says, if I couldn't call the police in time to really help, I think the Lord would make a way for me to help. I hope that I can. I don't carry a gun, so that wouldn't just be an option and never will be, to my knowledge. But what I want to focus on is the top part. Um, the world taking care of its own thing. And I don't know how many of you guys have ever bothered to look at Zionist Judaism. And, you know, it's, that, it just bothers me. I mean, first of all, how do we know if that person's a Christian or not? You know what I mean? As far as the world taking care of its own, how do we know that for a fact? We don't. So I, I don't think that works. But the, the bigger point is, if it is, in fact, the world taking care of its own, when we're supposed to be a light to the world, it still doesn't, you know, I... I it doesn't sit well with me for some reason. It doesn't seem, you know, my when I was raised, my, my dad was military. And one of the ingrained things that I had growing up was that you never, never do something that you yourself wouldn't do. You never ask of someone what you wouldn't do. And I think it is the trait of great leadership. No one would ever do anything you know that's that's why sergeants are respected in their divisions and their battalions and whatnot it's because they won't do anything that they they won't ask if anyone anything they won't do themselves but it disturbs me and i know jehovah's witnesses go this way too they view themselves as separate from the world in that respect and I'm not saying you have to carry a gun. It's funny because nobody actually answers the situation. You know, would, would you really, would you do anything or not? You know, it doesn't have to be with a gun. It doesn't have to be with a, a knife. But, you know, if, if we're going to stick to the kidnapping example, I think it does stay along the lines of it, violence is going to take place. Somebody is going to hurt somebody or attempt to anyway. And I'm not saying this this topic isn't more complicated than certain things, but like I said, if you pull up some real Jewish sermons on your on YouTube, for example, they talk about the goyim, which is us. It's anyone who's not Jewish, and they are all too happy to get us to do things on their behalf. So I guess my first question would be, if you view self-defense in the form of violence as a sin is it okay to get anyone to commit a sin on your behalf well you know when paul said do we do evil so good may come i think it falls into that statement i think that's an honest question because if you view self-defense or violence as a sin but you're okay getting someone else to do it then is there other things are there other sins now that we can get other people to commit on our behalf so we don't have to um, sully ourselves with that it seems like a dishonest answer to me it, it doesn't make sense and then I think about it 
you know, and, and everyone, that's the first answer, you know, I've seen the most of. It's that it's the world taking care of its own. So if it's a Christian, I guess somehow we would magically know it was a Christian. And, you know, and let's suppose it is. Let's suppose it's a pastor that goes to your church or something. And, um, you know, he, he's, he's already been shot dead and they're kidnapping his daughter. You know, it, it just doesn't work to me. It, there seems to be something wrong with that. And I, I don't, I absolutely do not believe in the world taking care of its own, quote unquote. If we're going to be a light to the world, to me, that means we stand up for good no matter what. Not hiding in the shadows, you know. That to me, I don't know. Like I said, it doesn't, it just doesn't compute. It doesn't sit well. It doesn't make sense to me. And then ultimately, I'm forged, you know, I, I, you have to ask the question because, you know, everyone says Jesus was a, is a pacifist, you know, not just was, but is, but yet he's going to usher in a, a military rule. There's, there's going to be bloodshed when Jesus comes back. So ultimately, in all honesty, Jesus ultimately will not be a pacifist. Now, you know, I can see already the biggest objection would be, well, what Jesus is doing is sanctioned by God and has nothing to do with us. And that's somewhat of a fair point. I wouldn't totally argue with that one. But I am left with the question. If Jesus saw someone kidnapping a child, what would he do? What would Jesus do? And I think it is somewhat of a... a it's an easy way out to say, well, he would call on the power of God and, and and cause the man to do what? I mean, he can't change his free will, in my opinion. And that's what I, a lot of these answers also seem to border on, is the violation of free will. Is God providing this way out? Well, if he interferes with anyone's actual mental process, then free will is out the window. And, and I'm not quite getting that one either. And then if God, you know, if Jesus, you know, I guess that would be my biggest question. What would Jesus do? You know, if it, if it were just up to him, would he do anything? Or would he say, well, we'll let the world take care of its own. This, you know, this issue is more complicated, I think, than many people give credit to. But when you say things that the Zionist Pharisaic Jews say, it just doesn't sit well with me. I don't think that was what was intended by any of these scriptures, you know. And and no one really has dealt with Romans. They come up with examples in the Old Testament and say different things. But the fact of the matter is, Paul says that it, it's he's the avenger of God. So it, 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 doesn't, it doesn't make sense to me to, to switch the subject and say, well, these people over here, and they, no. Paul made a very clear-cut statement. And, you know, bearing the sword only means one thing. But I guess that would be my biggest question in all of this. If, if you view violence as a sin, because that's really what it comes down to. If you don't view violence as a sin, then you, you really shouldn't have much to say about self-defense. You shouldn't be against it. If you don't view it as a sin, why would you, you know, it doesn't make any sense. So I have to assume you view it as a sin. So... You're okay with getting someone else to sin on your behalf. Because if you call the police, you, you're, to me, you're plainly saying you want to stop it. You don't want that to happen for some reason. So you call someone to intervene. And if you view it as a sin, then you're just getting someone else to sin on your behalf. You know, to me, if you were going to truly take the faith road out, you would say, well... I see the girl getting kidnapped, but if God wants to deliver her, he will. You know, I'm almost reminded of the old joke of the woman who's on the flooded roof. And she prays to God and she says, send help. And a boat shows up and says, get in. And she says, no, I'm waiting for God to deliver me. And the boat drives away and then the water comes up even higher. And the helicopter comes. And they say, get in. And she says, no, I'm praying that God will deliver me. Well, finally, the water overtakes her and she dies. And in heaven, uh, she asks God, she says, why didn't you save me? And he, 
He says, I sent a boat and a helicopter. I mean, what else, what else do you want? So, I, you know, I kind of see it that way, is that people, you know, and we say that about the gospel. It's so funny. We say that people are the biggest tool that God uses. People are the ones who deliver the gospel. They deliver, you know what I mean? We see people as an instrument to further the good in the world. But when it comes to someone being harmed, and like I said, they, I'm not talking about jumping straight to the shootout scenario where you just pull a gun and start shooting people left and right. I'm talking about the just basically the willingness to put yourself between them and a the child. And, you know, you're in a situation where standing there is not going to be enough. You know, you get between them, they push you to the ground and they grab the kid again. You know, that kind of thing. And there's some sobering statistics about all this, just to put it in perspective, because people keep sending me these scenarios. And, it's, you know, one of them that this person wrote was, well, what if your girl is a kidnapper? Well, first of all, I would have no problem using force against her to stop her from hurting an innocent. You know, you I, I think you do render on the Caesars what is Caesars. I think if you put yourself in that position, I think that you may have something coming your way that you've earned yourself. And, and you know, look at that word earned, okay? I'm not saying I'm the righteous dispenser of justice. I'm saying you put yourself in a position and now you got to pay the price. I mean, it's just a fact of life that we see everywhere. And the other one was if, if she's violent, if she's the kidnapper and someone else bears down a weapon on her and I'm there with a weapon, what do I do? And I would say, honestly, yeah, that's a trickier situation. It really is. Um, you know, there's a human instinct to protect your own family. But, you know what I mean? It, it's, yeah, I'll admit that's the difference between us, I guess. I would admit that is a really weird situation, and I couldn't really just say what I would do. Um, but I think that's, you know, and that's what people usually do with things like this. They resort to um, the craziest situation they can think of. And, you know, ultimately, I can tell you this. I would not let my daughter kidnap someone, you know, just, just if she was part of some kind of perverted sex ring or something. I just wouldn't let her do it. Now, what happens between me, that guy, and her in between, you know, I don't know. But I can tell you I would not let her take an innocent person with me having any ability to stop it. And all the situations seem to be along those lines. And, you know, they're, they're kind of way out there. And people say, well, you'll never find, I've already found myself in several situations. Um, none of them had to do with kidnapping. But they had to do with stepping in. Um you know, guns were never involved, you know, um, but there was violence involved. And I can't say I regret those situations, you know, and on the, on the other side, as far as the kidnapping thing, I think we should look at the honest statistics. And from what I could tell, 800,000 children are kidnapped. 200,000 of those a year are going to be from people they know, 58,000. Uh, well, I should say reported missing, 800 reported missing, 200,000 taken by family members, you know, messy divorce situations and the like. And a scary number is 58,000 are, are taken by complete strangers. And of those 58,000, 47% are returned and 53%, well, I'll let you decide what happens to them. So... That's my thing, I guess, I would point out. In all these responses, they seem to fall around a similar vein. And this is stuff I've heard from Jews and Jehovah's Witnesses. Um, from what I understand, the Amish also feel this way. These, these other groups, they have no problem using. And, and that really gives me pause because people say, they've, I've, I, I'm not lying. I've come across this term quite a few times in the, in the last 24 hours. It's the world taking care of its own. And that's what the Jews say. We're gone. We're the lesser. Jehovah's Witnesses say the same thing. Oh, it's the unsaved. It, it, it's almost like you, you make these other people less than you. You belittle them. Oh, they're part of the world. Well, why are you here? It's to be lights in a dying world. Okay? Whether I'm right or not, that is really a bad position to have. That you, in some way, are better than them. Because that's, you know, it's kind of what you're saying is like, I wouldn't help them because they're part of the sinful world. 
like I said, what if they were a Christian? You know, it, let's say you went to church with all of these people. It, it just doesn't hold up. A Christian gets kidnapped and you call a cop and that cop and turns out to be a Christian that you go to church with. Unless you don't believe cops can be Christians. And that's to me, that's a whole nother topic altogether. But he shows up and he shoots somebody. You know, it, it just is to me, it just doesn't make any sense. You know, and I definitely don't think that anyone in the world, you know, is, like I said, like a six year, like a six year old girl could even be a Christian, you know. She she she's not old enough to even have decided these things for herself. You know, is is that a form of not letting them come to Jesus once they've been sexually molested if they are lucky enough to survive? Like I said, it doesn't sit well with me, and I, I definitely don't accept the answer. It's part of the world's problem. You know, it that doesn't strike me as a Christian thing to not care. How can you not value that little girl's life higher than your own? It, it just doesn't make any sense to me. And we're left with that chilling question, in my opinion, is what would Jesus do? You know, and, and forget all the supernatural answers, because to me, those are just easy ways out. You know, you call an angel, he'd strike him dead. Well, if he strikes him dead, he's using violence. If he calls an angel, he's using violence. You know, if it was just Jesus, this man taking this little girl and shoving him in a car, would he just let him do it? Would he let him do it? Would he just say, you know what? This is part of the world's problem. Let me go get the authorities. You know, it, 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 it doesn't seem to be that would be his character. It really doesn't. So that's just some further thoughts on the issue. And, and once again, I don't I don't approach this and say, you know, I'm absolutely right. And I'm you know, I'm not dogmatic about this. I think that there is a, a serious problem that it seems like everyone's just kind of dancing around this issue. It, it doesn't seem like we're doing the right thing by these children. In these examples, you know, and it goes to many other examples. Don't get me wrong. There are many other ways to look at this. And I don't know. It just doesn't. Something's not computing for me. It's just not making sense to me. And I don't know, maybe it makes sense to you guys. But that would be my biggest thing. The one thing I would point out, I've been seeing this a lot in these response threads. And when you sound like a Pharisee to me, then I know something's wrong. Something's just not adding up. And and to say it's the world taking care of itself is to me, to me that is kind of cowardly. You know, just just speaking candidly about it. And there's no reason to take these examples and say you know we go straight to shooting each other. I'm just talking about the simple fact. You know, would you would you punch somebody in the face? to protect a child, you know what I mean, if, if that's what it came to. And uh, mostly people, and, and I, I, the, the people that, that come out straightforward and say they have children and family, they seem to say yes. The people who don't say anything about having children and family basically say no, I wouldn't interfere, is basically what they're saying. They, they're paying up, they're saying a lot of things, but the one thing they're not saying is that yes, I would throw myself into that situation and, and whether it cost me my life or not, I would not let that child be taken by such a vile person. Most of them are just saying it's the world's problem. A Jew says it's the Goim's problem. Jehovah's Witness says it's the unsaved world's problem, the evil world. It just doesn't seem like that's the Christian thing to do, in my opinion. So I look forward to some um, deep responses on this issue. Because like I said, I've been reading them all and all the emails. And um, I, I just, I try not to have any hypocrisy in my thinking. And, and I know, you know, it's easy to say, well, oh, you say that, but you say. But I'm just, I'm being honest. The overarching teaching of Jesus is that he would lay down his life for, for his sheep. And 
according to Paul, we weren't even his sheep. They were still sinners, and he laid down his life for them. So, I don't know. You know, and you know, and you already know my stance. I think self-defense is kind of a given in the Bible. It runs through the Bible, in my opinion. But I guess that would be my question. You know, is it really the world's problem? And barring, uh, you know, using supernatural powers, you know, what, what would Jesus do in a situation like that? What would he do? Would he do anything? Or would he say it's the world's problem? I don't know. I, I really don't. You know, based off of some of these answers that I'm getting, I, I really couldn't tell you either way what Jesus would do based on what some of these people are saying. You know, and is this child in this kidnapping example, is this child's life worth more than yours? I don't know. God bless.